Love these three. But the greatest of these is love. Ooh, love. The greatest of these is love. Amen. Thank you, Father. If you're visiting with us this morning, you're truly our honored guest. Thank you so much. Uh, for choosing to come to visit with us here at the Fifth Ward Church. We know you have many choices. Someone may have invited you. If you're watching by way of television, certainly thank you. Also, we hope that we can say something that will minister to you today. If you have a question about anything, uh, feel free to ask us any question you may have. Uh, our elders will acknowledge all of the visitors at the end of our worship service. Uh, if you will, if you will. Fourteen ways to share the greatest gift ever given. I know that's a strange title. But let's get right to it. 14 ways to share the greatest gift ever given. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, the brother just read and you hear in a few moments ago, in him you also, after listening to the message of truth, that's the only way you will be saved. Amen. If you listen to something. Amen. 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 Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by. Amen. And that's God's way. It's, it's the way we, way, way, way information is transmitted. If you are on a new job, you have to learn and you have to listen. Now, sometimes we listen simply by reading. And in God's word, there is a message. And sometimes to folks who are smart, the scriptures say this is foolishness. This message is foolishness. But to those of us that want to get to heaven, it's salvation. Listen to what he says. He said, after listening to the message, what you're doing right now, somebody, I don't know why, who brought you, why you came, and maybe you're coming to experience a worship experience, don't know what, but I hope your ears are open this morning. He said, the message of truth. So that tells us that's also a message of untruth. There's a message that's not true. So you really need to be careful of what you listen to, the gospel of your salvation. Gospel is that word that means good communication. Good news is what the word means. And there's some news you can listen to, but if it's not good, you need to put it away. But this gospel is so good because it's the gospel of salvation. The apostle Peter, when he preached the first gospel sermon, he along with the rest of the apostles, he says, save yourselves from this untoward or this crooked generation. Sin is the problem that came into this world. And if we don't do something about our sins before we leave this world, that will be the least of our problem while we're on this earth. Because we have eternity to look forward to. And it is the salvation of our souls that is the ultimate, ultimate prize. And as Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and he writes to us, he says, you after listening to the message of truth, the gospel, the good news of your salvation, having also believed, because some folks listen and just don't believe for whatever reason. But you know, I found out if you don't believe in the gospel, you believe in something. Amen. And I just want to know, what is it that you believe in? Do you believe in your job? My goodness. You know a job is here today and gone today. Amen, somebody. And I know you got a, you, I know your girlfriend is cute and your boyfriend is hunky, but I hope you're not putting all your trust in that girl or that boy because they will let you down. Mama and daddy are good and they love you, but guess what? There's no promise mama and daddy will even be here tomorrow. And so if you're putting your trust in all of that stuff, I, I, I think you ought to know by now, if you're, of, if you're of an age at all, that all of those things are fleeting. And this message you must believe in. You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. And see, that's the gift that God gives those that believe. They asked the question to Peter and the rest of the apostles in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. What shall we do? Verse 37, what shall we do? And he told them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
And there may be someone in here today that needs to do just that. That's why we keep this water ready. This water gets good use. It has a little chlorine. It's not nasty and dirty. And it will baptize you even this day. Amen. And he says, and you shall receive the gift. The scriptures call it a seal of the Holy Spirit. You can't see it with your naked eyes, but it is, it is our earnest money. It is when we stand before God at the judgment that God could say, that's one of mine. Amen. She, he has the seal. If you haven't been baptized in water for the remission, for the forgiveness of your sins, you do not have the seal, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And God is not prejudiced. He doesn't care if you're black, white, yellow, or brown. He wants to give that gift to anybody, even this day, who wants to be saved. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Verse 14, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession. God is going to buy, God has bought us back to praise and of the glory. Amen. Yes, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to share with you what this gift is all about because you won't do anything if you don't know you got a gift. He says, Romans 1, verse 16, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so this, power, this gospel is God's power. It's God's message for us to teach and preach to all the world. And I hope that your, your heart yearns. I know, I know you got some issues at home. I know you have some issues with your help, but that's the least of your worries. And you need to put everything in perspective and get this thing right before it's everlasting too late. And then there are those that's in the body who strayed away, who once had the truth, who once had the gospel, and somehow they've left it, they've lost it. In the book of James, he writes in James chapter 5 and verse 19, My brethren, if any among you strays from the truth, notice this, he uses his word truth quite a bit in the New Testament. Make no mistake about it. Don't be naive and think that you can believe anything and go to heaven. Amen. Think you can listen and obey anybody. Ask the, you can't even ask the people. Years ago, Jim Jones took people to an island and taught and preached and, and mesmerized a whole lot of folk. And, and all of them died following something that was false. Right. And he says, if you stray from the truth and one turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. We have, we have friends and loved ones in our families that we know that who've strayed from the truth. Amen. When we say strayed from the truth, some have left the truth and some have just really just given up on life and they need somebody to put their hands on them this morning. Somebody to call, somebody to care for them. Listen to Acts chapter 8 and verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the good news, that's that gospel about the kingdom of God, that's his church. You see, you can't have Jesus without having his church. Amen. Some folk want to serve the Lord where I am and have Jesus, but God, the word church means ecclesia. It's an assembly. That's why this audience looks so beautiful. The scriptures say, well, two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And so the church comes together with all our issues, with all our problems. And yes, we do have, we're not perfect. No, the Fifth Ward Church of Christ is not sinless. We have our issues, but we're working them out. And we're working them out together. Amen. And we're laboring just like you do at home. You don't throw your, throw your child out because they skipped school one day, do you? Amen. Or do you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're mad. Yes, you're angry. But you sit them down and you talk to them and you teach them and you try to show them what is right. This church is full of sick folk. Amen. But you're in the right hospital this morning. Amen. Yeah, you're in the place. You're getting the medicine this morning, if you will. Listen to Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom, here it is again, shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. This is what God says about this gospel. The whole world will hear this gospel, notice this, and then the end will come. Every person that's living will have an opportunity to hear this gospel. And I don't know, I don't know, I know there are many members in here, but, but even if it's one time that you have the opportunity to hear the gospel, maybe that's why Jesus said the day you hear my voice, 
harden not your heart. Because sometimes you know you're hearing what's the truth. You know you're hearing what's right. And the devil is whispering in you. That's not what you need to be listening to. You got too many things to do. You got other things to take care of. Like you controlling your life. And God said this gospel will be preached. Will be taught. And those of us that are here right now, we have this gospel. God put it in earthen vessels for us to deliver it to all the world. Amen. Everywhere we go. You might not be a missionary, but you do have a world, if you will. Amen. And see, what we ought to do is to share this wonder. What better gift? Is there a greater gift than you can give anybody than the opportunity to have eternal life? Tell me what it is. Please tell. A car? Well, no, I don't think that'll work. A house? I don't, I, that, that won't do it. Ten million dollars? Too many folk have millions of dollars and, 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 and are miserable. Ask Donald Sterling, if you will. He can't even get in places. He has almost a billion dollars. And some folk don't even want him to come to their place. It's not about the money. Oh, it's about the salvation. That's what it's all about. It puts things in perspective. Even if you have health problems and you say, well, my back is hurting. I'm having heart problems. But you think, well, but you know what? I got eternity in the bag. Amen, hey, man, somebody. It helps you to think better. It helps you to get along with people better. It helps you to communicate better. Amen. And so, church, we are trying to admonish and keep before the church. And I know sometimes we come to the Lord's house and we want to hear a sermon on how I personally can have, can improve my personal standards. And we deliver sermons about our spiritual growth and our personal growth, but we need to, we need to keep God's mission before us all the time. Yeah. Because God's mission is our mission. We need to keep, some of us are depressed because you, you got all your focus just on you, yourself, and your family. God put us here to be a light to the world. Amen. He said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Amen. And God is not selfish. God is not stingy. One young man said, told me one time, he said, Brother Gary, it seems like God just want all the glory. He does want all the glory. <laughs> but don't you understand, young man, when God gets the glory, you get it too? If you, take, if you do God's will, God going to bless you. You're going to be blessed. God is not selfish. God is in the blessing business. If you make up your mind that you're going to be a husband that's going to live by the principles of God's word, and you say, I'm going to do things God's way, don't your wife will be blessed? Your children will be blessed? You will be blessed? You'll sleep better? You'll live longer? What more can you ask? Amen. Just do it God's way. And stop being so selfish. So we want, we're trying to give this gift that God has given us. And we're trying to bring some practicality to it, to, especially those that are members of this, this body here at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ. And I want to go through this quickly, but I want you to listen attentively. If you're visiting, I want you to, to, to really listen to, to, to what we're trying to do and, and, and we, want, we want every member, especially in here right now, if you're not already sharing this gift with somebody, we want you to make up in your mind today that you're going to do at least one of these things to share this gift. And there may be some of you that will do more than one. Let me get right down to it, if you will. We have, we have, we've had an evangelism meeting not long ago with a group, a small, fairly small group, trying to, to empower, trying to... To, to, to set up something that we can, can do God's will in a more effective way. Amen. Amen. These are some of the avenues we have. And I'm going to do this in alphabetical order just because it's the way I have them listed down. But there's no, no, no priority on any one. We have what we call Bible call. Bible call is a telephone number that you can call. Anyone can call. If you have a Bible question, if you know someone that has a Bible question about about a number of different topics, about their personal well-being, about spirituality, about salvation, about how to be saved, about the church, about uh, there's was, there was a special section to uh, some, for teenagers, for children. You, they can call that number. 
and they can listen to a, an answer from, from scholar men who have studied and, get, and, and they can give some answers. If you have some questions, you want to, some follow up, there's a way you can follow up and you can have a personal study. But this is something that's been around a long time. This is our Bible call. This number you can call, we're going to start putting it in our bulletin. You can, if some of you had a coworker and they have a question that you don't have the answer to, you tell them to call in and see if they can get an answer. It's, we're also going to put this on our website. We have number two, number two, we have calendar and ministry activities calendar and ministry activities. I need all the brothers, every, all the brothers in here, we're, we're going to ask everybody to kind of mobilize in just a minute. We have a ministry document. It's a ministry document that lists all of the ministries of the Fifth Ward Church of Christ and all the ministry leaders. We have this in English and in Spanish, and in Spanish. When we get, when we get ready to leave today, we want to make sure everybody get one of these ministry brochures. They list all the ministry, ministries that you can be involved in. It has the person that you can, you can contact if you want to be involved in, this, in these ministries. We have over 40 ministries listed on, on, this, on this document. So ministries, you can, you, you can invite someone. All of these ministries are open. Any of the members and guests that can come also. We have a calling ministry. Some of you may have gotten a call this week. How many of you, if you hear that you got a call on your phone or on your voicemail from somebody at the church this week, if you got a call, raise your hand. If you got a call, raise your hand. Call, raise your hand. Okay, some of you just don't answer your phone. <laughs> Uh, we have a call-in ministry that calls. They're going to be calling once a quarter. You can play a part in that. We need English and Spanish speakers to call members. We call sometimes members who miss over th three or four Sundays. They go on a, a, uh, go a, on a, on a I'm not going to call you delinquent, but sometimes people just don't fill out their membership cause and we know that that happens but it's a way that we're trying to be more accountable we're trying to look out be our brothers and sisters keeper if you want to work in that ministry to call you're welcome to do that we're trying to find ways to try to say to encourage those who are discouraged and you'd be surprised at how many people or, or, or need a call every now and then, a call in ministry. Uh, we have church business calls. This is a way, it, it's, everybody can do this. Before you leave today, if you're here today, the brothers have business cards. It's a, a business card that we want to give to every member. If you go to the grocery store, you out at the, go to the cleaners, you're at the gas stations, and, and, you see, and you're speaking and somebody's talking. How you doing? Yeah, good day, rainy day. Yeah, rainy day today, rainy day. Uh, listen, here, take one of, my, take one of our, our, our church cards. Oh, oh, you go to the Fifth Ward Church? Yes, right off the corner, I 10 in Waco Street. See, listen, we, we have funerals. We baptize people that come to funerals. Brother Ray preached a sermon at a funeral not long ago, and four people got baptized. Never know what opportunity. Some of these people you will never see again. Okay, I can't teach a Bible class. Can you give out a business card? Is that too hard to do? That, might, that business card might open the door, an opportunity for somebody to get to, to grasp hold to this gift. Front and back. It has a map on it. You see it has a map on it with all of the directions so they can't get lost. We need disciples. Number four. Number, four, number five. It's five. We need disciplers. Go back. Go, go back up. Maybe I didn't put that slide on there. We need disciplers. We need those who, after someone gets baptized or placed membership of the church, we have those who call, just not bugging anybody, hey, listen, I'm Gary Smith, and I just want to welcome you to the Fifth Ward Church of Christ, and just any, any questions you have, anything, you, you know, the Bible class that you're looking for, just to check on, if they miss over two Sundays, we want you to, to, to we have a, a protocol that we're doing to try to make sure everybody is encouraged. You find out some people have issues, oh, I just, I went into surgery, my mother was in a car wreck, I'm, I can't make it today. I'm staying on the other side of town. I'm, I'm out of gas. People tell you all kinds of things that we need. Disciples are followers of Christ, and we need encouragers to do that. If you want to be a disciple, if you want to be a disciple, Brother Barry Gibson, where you at? Where, where Brother Barry? Where, where, he may be across the street in the nursery. Or one of the elders. Anyone, if you want to be a disciple, and let, some, let one of the elders know, and we'd love to have you. Our day of good works. I'm going in alphabetical order. Our day of good works. Some of you know about our day of good work. It is, we want the whole church involved. We're trying to minister to three to 5,000 people in our community this year. Mark your dates, August the 1st. We're going to be distributing goods. We're going to have all of our Bible school teachers to, to, to decorate their classes. We're having an open house. We're having, Brother Leroy's having all kinds of health services. People that would never, ever come to this place will be at our Day of Good Works this coming year. It will be the biggest that we've ever had. 
And we need everybody involved because we're going to baptize people that you don't even, we don't even know because of our day of good works. Our evangelism CD. We have a CD. The CD that was produced and made. This is, the, this is the cover of it. It is called Life's Most Important Questions. Life's Most Important Question. What is my purpose? Why am I here? Is there life after death? Does heaven and hell exist, saved or unsaved? You think those are some questions people need to answer? Amen. With this CD, we're going to ask. Matter of fact, Brother Rick, grab the CDs. Grab the CDs. I'm going to do this right now because this is just that important. We need 100 people who will take this CD. Take this CD. This week, it's 15 minutes long. Who will take this CD and give it to, to someone who's not a member of the church. This week. Now, we don't want you to get it and put it on your shelf or put it with your, put it with your Isaac Hayes CDs. <laughs> Is Isaac Hayes still living? Well, you know, I don't know where that came from. If you, if you, if you, if you will, will, are willing to commit to take a CD and to give it to somebody, we need more brothers than that, raise your hand. Raise your hand right now. We're going to give it to you right now. We, we have a hundred to give out. We will, we will have more. They are free this first time. We will have more to give out, but we want to give out 100 today. We're going to ask Brother Gerby Aguera to do a CD in Spanish. Brother Gerby, we're going to ask Brother Gerby to do a CD in Spanish called Life Most Important Questions. And we're going to produce it and we want to give it out, out also. We have 100. Give them out, give them out to, you, to you. Give out the last one today. And then others we'll have ready, we'll have ready at a later day. Uh, I will, we'll have read it at a later date, and I'll make another announcement in just a little bit. It's, it's an evangelism CD called Life's Most Important Question. Amen. Don't, do not take them if you're going to keep them. If you want to get another one for yourself, you can do that later on. You, we out of them? You out of them? You out of them that quick? Okay, okay. We, those that have your hands up and you want them, we'll have them ready. Brother Sedell, can we have them ready next week? Amen. That's, he said amen, so that's... He's the man. We'll have him ready next week. And we'll have it ready even sooner than that in just a minute. Just a... Home Bible studies, number, 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 I can't remember what number it is. Home Bible studies. If you, some, some people are uncomfortable in crowds and in groups. If you know someone who would like a home Bible study, contact the church, contact Brother Gibson, contact myself, call We'll set up a personal home Bible study to, to, to teach what a person must do in order to be saved according to the scriptures. Home Bible studies. If you are interested in teaching a home Bible study, make sure you let us know that. We have a team that's doing that right now. Neighborhood canvassing. Once, we have a group that goes out in our community once a week. And this community knows the Fifth Ward Church of Christ much because of this group and other things we do in the community. We want to make sure people know we're not selling anything. We're not asking people to buy anything from us. We're just sharing the love of Jesus Christ. If you, if you like walking, we, they stay out normally an hour. They do it every single week. Commit, some, commit to doing it once a month. To go with this group and learn from those who go and you see that it's not nearly as intimidating as you think it might be. We meet very interesting people and some who've come back here to the Fifth Ward Church of Christ. Neighborhood Camerson. We have a brand new website. A brand new website. Uh, 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 the website, that, that's the web address. You know the other address was fifthwardcoc.org. The new web address, please write it down, is, uh, or, or it's in your bulletin. Uh, fwcoc.org. This website has much on it. It has the, the CD I was just telling you about, Life's Most Important Question. There is a link right on it. You kind of see that. There is a link that you can go and click on that link. If you're at work, someone's at work, wherever they are, they can go to that link and listen to this same CD. Listen to the message on this website. That stays on there. It has, uh, has all kinds of links on our, on our uh, new website. It has a youth section, all of our ministry sections. If you want information about it, it is a way that we can engage people to teach them. It has an about page on there that shares what we believe and what we are all about in the Church of Christ, in this Fifth Ward Church of Christ. Amen. So that's all, all of that. So all of the announcements, Vacation Bible School, there is a welcome video for those that, that, that want to know a little bit more about the video. For our members, there is a, 
a, late, a, a membership update. Every other month we're doing a video talking about what we've done and what we're going to be doing. That's on the Go Explore our new website. Let's use it. Let's drive traffic to the website. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and a, and a Instagram. I don't, I don't know how to use Instagram. But I believe me, I believe you me, our young folk know how to use it. Uh, youth have an Instagram, Instagram page, a Facebook page. Our singles have it. We just ask the congregation to keep things positive, keep things pure. We don't want any, 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 you know, on the website, okay? All right. But let's use it. Let's send people to it. Uh, uh, drive people to the site that they can come. It has map, interactive math, and many other things. We have an open forum. Bible class every Thursday. Brother Diggs and the, and the group that works with him, Brother Vincent McKinney, every Thursday uh, for someone that has questions at 7 o'clock, 7 30. We don't do it in the summertime, I, I don't think, uh, but, but that class has baptized many people, introduced many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. This year we have a special invitation, an invitation, a written invitation. If you want to take one of these, it's this square, it's in, it's in an envelope. I did put a picture up there if they stay with me. I put a picture of the invitation. If you're out about, show the picture. That's what I'm trying to say. It's on the screen if he put it up there. You're not getting a hint yet. Okay, all right, well. It's a, it is an invitation. <laughs> it is an invitation. Is this square? It, it gives someone a personal invitation to come to our Thursday night class. We also have, we also have there is the invitation. Be my guest. That is, that is, it comes about this size. If you want to be a little bit more personal, write someone's name on that. You can give that to them and invite them to that Thursday class. We have a resource, resource center services. There are a number of things that we do, like we have a cooking class, a gardening. We, and the resource center is, 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 to, is for every member to use their gifts to glorify God. And the, 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 the thought is you use your gift to glorify God Invite someone to our cooking class, to our gardening class that's a non-member. It's a way to introduce them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we've already done it over and over again that individuals who normally wouldn't be here on Sunday mornings, they couldn't come on Wednesday night, they may go to a mother support group class. They may go to an exercise class that Brother Leroy has on Saturday mornings, or they may come to a walk for life that we walked all the way from here to Finnegan Park, and we had over 100 guests to walk with us, and some of them came back to worship service. We're using these resources. Brother Carl Spencer writes it bi-monthly, sends out to our entire congregation an email highlighting one of the, the resources and activities this year, this, this, this month, I think he just sent it out. It highlights our garden. We have a community garden. That those that have a green thumb, if you have a green thumb, you want to work in the garden, go and work in the garden. We're producing fruit. We're going to use some of the, the produce at our Day of Good Works for our community. We meet people who are not members of the church. They're not in this building. They're not right around here. And you can work in there, use your gift, and God gets ultimately the glory. And he highlights that in the, new, in the email newsletter that goes out each month. And so, so uh, you, can, you can be involved in that. And tutoring, Brother, Brother Brown works with our tutorers, and they tutor members and non-members who come here because of the love of Jesus Christ. Notice, out, and these individuals are working. They're not getting paid anything. It's volunteer, and they are involved. They're engaged. They feel a part of the church, and we want everybody to feel a part of the work of the church. Our television program we have, I'm coming, getting ready to close. We have a television program. The brother Raymond Hooks, uh, senior, or the third, is it senior? Junior. Senior. Brother Raymond Hooks, senior. And Brother Otis Phillips trained that group, and we have a group that works on these television. They, they edit, do a television program that's been running for years. It comes on at 10.30 in the morning on Access Cable. It also comes, I put the web, web address. You can go to the web address, or you can send someone who's not here, who's at home ill, and that's who watches our program. A lot of individuals, every at 10.30, they don't miss it like, like clockwork. They, they are not here, but they're able to be ministered to through the Word. We can, some of us can go and pray with them. Some of them have come to worship service and so these are tools we want the, us to use if we're at home we're somewhere use these tools we have a visitors packet we're going to start getting we, our bags didn't come in uh, today to show we have a visitors packet will include one of the cds some other things that we want to give to all of our visitors faith hope love these three
But the greatest of these is love. Oh, love. The greatest of these is love. Oh, love, love. Mm-hmm. I can have all the knowledge in the world. What good is 